welcome to the course Excelling with Mathematical Modeling. Today we will be talking about horizontal oscillations and how to model those kind of oscillations. So, if you consider this spring and the mass attached to it, as you can see that the surface is we assume to be frictionless and there is an oscillation of this particular object moving to and fro. So, to model this kind of phenomena, so we say that a particle of mass m, say it rests at this point A and there are two forces which is acting on it. One is this force O1 origin, another is force O2, the origin is O2. And the law of force V is m mu 1 to the power n multiplied by distance to the power n towards this force O1 and m mu 2 to the power n multiplied by distance to the power n towards the fixed center O2. So, at the point A both the forces are acting and the particle is in equilibrium. So, the forces are equal and opposite. So, as you can see that this O1, A and this O2, they are in a straight line and hence they are called collinear. Now, a small push is given to the right hand side. So, it disturbs the equilibrium, we assume that it is a stable equilibrium. So, if it is given a small push to the right, the tendency will be to maintain the equilibrium the stable equilibrium that it will go back to its original position. So, we assume that let after the push let P be the position of the particle at any time t and the tendency of this particle is to move back towards the point A. So, in such a scenario let us see what happens. So, we assume that this O1, O2 let that be equal to A, that is this whole distance and O1 A that is equal to D1 and A O2 is equal to D2. So, basically if I add D1 plus D2, I should get that to be A and since this force the, at the point A, forces are equal and opposite because the particle is in equilibrium. So, both the forces are keeping this particle at this point A uh, in equilibrium and therefore, the law mu 1 to the power n into distance to the power n. So, the distance from here is d1 and from here is d2. So, that must be equal to mu 2 to the power n into d2 to the power n. If I simplify this a bit, this will be mu 1 d1 is equal to mu 2 d2 and this is going to give you mu 1 by d2 equal to mu 2 by d 1, which I can write it as mu 1 plus mu 2 by d 1 plus d 2 and this is mu 1 plus mu 2 divided by a, because d 1 plus d 2 is equal to a and hence I can equate this to and I can get d 2 equal to a mu 1 divided by mu 1 plus mu 2 and d1 equal to I equate this to a mu 2 divided by mu 1 plus mu 2. So, I get the distance in terms of uh, this a mu 1 and mu 2. Now, let us consider the particle is given a small push towards O2 and let p be the position at any time t. So, the particle is slightly displaced from the equilibrium position A to the position P 
and it will be it will have a tendency to move towards the point A. And let us take this A P to be some x. So, your equation of motion So, mass into acceleration which is d 2 x d t square. Now, there are two forces one is acting at the point O 1 another is acting at the point O 2. So, if the particle is at the point P its tendency will be to move towards this O 1. So, that we assume that the equilibrium is stable. So, if it moves towards this O 1 then this O 1 uh, becomes an attractive force and this O 2 becomes a repulsive force. So, here is what you have to understand that okay, here is your point A and you are giving a push in this side. This is your O 2 and this is your O 1. If the particle is not in equilibrium, then it is going towards this direction and then your O 2 would have been the point of attraction, but an O 1 the point of repulsion. But in this case at this point A the particle is in equilibrium and we assume it is a stable equilibrium. So, if you now give a small push and by the definition of stable equilibrium this will tend to come back to its original position A and in doing so it is its actually motion will be like this. And if its actual motion is like this after the push then O 1 becomes the point of attraction and O 2 becomes the point of repulse. Now, if O 1 is the point of attraction, so let us see what is the force acting on this. So, by the definition it is given that it is mu 1 to the power n multiplied by the distance which is your O 1 p to the power n. And for the O2, it is m mu 2 to the power n and O2 p whole to the power n. Now, which one will be positive and which one will be negative? So, as I have explained that it is moving towards O1 after the push to maintain the equilibrium, O1 becomes the point of attraction and if the force is attractive, you have a negative sign and O 2 becomes the pulse of repulsion and if the uh, force is repulsive we have a positive sign. So, that is how your sign is determined. Now, your O 1 p as you can see that this is your x. So, O 1 p is d 1 plus x whole to the power n and O 2 p that is d 2 minus x whole to the power n. So, let me rewrite this after cancelling the m from both sides we will get d 2 x d t square is equal to minus mu 1 whole to the power n d 1 plus x to the power n plus mu 2 to the power n d 2 minus x to the power n. Now, we use binomial expansion. I will take d 1 common and I get 1 plus x by d 1 whole to the power n. In the similar manner, I will take d 2 common and 1 minus x by d 2 whole to the power m. The next step is we expand them binomially. So, 1 plus n x plus n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial x square by d 1 square plus dot 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 plus mu 2 to the power n d 2 to the power n 1 minus n x by d 2 plus 
n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial x square by d2 square minus dot dot dot. And since your n is uh, x is small, this will be approximately equal to, so we neglect the square and the higher terms and you will be getting minus d1 mu1 to the power n d1 to the power n 1 plus n by d1 into x plus mu2 to the power n d2 to the power n 1 minus nx by d2. x square and higher powers of x are neglected because x is small. So, if we simplify this minus mu 1 whole to the power n d 1 to the power n minus n times mu 1 to the power n divided by it is not divided. So, d 1 to the power n minus 1 into x plus mu 2 to the power n d 2 to the power n minus n times mu 2 to the power n d 2 to the power n minus 1 times x. Now, in the equilibrium position this is equal to this. So, this two will cancel and we are left with d 2 x d t square that is equal to minus mu 1 to the power n a mu 2 divided by mu 1 plus mu 2 to the power n minus 1 into n x minus mu 2 to the power n a mu 1 by mu 1 plus mu 2 to the power n minus 1 into n x. So, what I did is I substitute the value of d 1 and I substitute the value of d 2 which we have calculated here. And if I simplify this, I will be getting d 2 x d t square is equal to minus a mu 1 mu 2 whole to the power n minus 1 divided by mu 1 plus mu 2 whole to the power n minus 2 into x. So, this equation is of the form d 2 x d t square is equal to some minus lambda square x or and this is a known form it is a uh, equation which gives you a simple harmonic motion. So, the motion of the particle in this case is simple harmonic and the period of oscillation will be 2 pi by root of lambda square which is root lambda where your value of lambda is square root of this quantity. So, in case of this horizontal oscillation, we see that it gives to a simple harmonic motion with period 2 pi by lambda, where lambda is given by square root of this quantity. Now, let us consider a case where there is a uh, damped oscillation. By damped oscillation means there will be uh, some force which will be opposing this motion. So, let us see what happens. So, if you consider a damped oscillation in this particular video, you will see uh, that this spring is having an oscillation, though in this case it is a vertical one, but some force is acting on it and you can see that the curve it is uh, though giving a cycle, but that cycle is slowly decreasing uh, with respect to time because there is a uh, force which is working against this motion, it is not frictionless at all and slowly that curve decreases and ultimately it will go to 0. So, this is what happens during this damped oscillation. So, that damped oscillation law can be anything, 
So, you can take that your original equation was d 2 x d t square is equal to some minus mu square times x. Uh, anyway, it was lambda, but let us take mu, really does not matter. And let us there be a force uh, which varies as the velocity. So, if there is a force which is acting against it and varies as the velocity, uh, so we can put it some minus times v uh, some k times dx dt. To make it a bit convenient uh, for our calculation, I can put a 2k, uh, the pro constant of proportionality uh, and we get the equation like this. If I want an additional force other than this damping effect, so I say that let us uh, add up periodic acceleration of the form cos of b t. So, in this particular case, we are adding two uh, things. One is this damping uh, force, another is this uh, additional periodic force. So, basically, if your string or your spring is like this and it is moving to and fro. So, what is happening is as it moves this side, there will be a force which will oppose and it varies as the velocity. So, this is 2 k v plus there is an additional uh, disturbing force which is of the form uh, a periodic one f cos p t. So, what will happen if we consider such case? So, in that case your equ equation of motion will be some minus mu square x minus 2 k dx dt plus f cos p t. So, I can write this as d square plus 2 k d plus mu square into x equal to f cos p t. So, this is a second order differential equation where your operator d is nothing but d d t. So, if you are familiar with this kind of equation which you should be, then you know that we take the solution of the form uh, x equal to a e to the power m t and we have two parts of the solution uh, as a general solution. First is the complementary function and another is the particular integral. So, for the complementary function, uh, we first take x equal to a e to the power m t be the trial solution and then your dx dt which is equivalent to d is a m e to the power m t and your d 2 x, put an x here, d 2 x d t square is equal to a m square e to the power m t. We substitute both of them here, you get m square plus 2 k m plus mu square and that equal to 0 is your uh, auxiliary equation. So, you solve for m which will give you minus k plus minus root of b square minus 4 a c. So, mu square minus k square with the i, I assume that mu is greater than k. So, your complementary function will be e to the power minus k t some constant a 1 cos of root of mu square minus k square into t plus say epsilon 1. If you are not familiar with this second order differential equation, you just have to go through it. Uh, this is quite uh, I mean a simple solution. Uh, so, uh, so, you need to know how to solve this kind of differential equation. 
So, after this we look for the, so this is the complementary function and then you have to look for the particular integral and to do that you have to write xp, so for the particular integral this is 1 by d square plus 2 k d plus mu square f of cos b t. This I write it as d square plus mu square minus 2 k d divided by d square plus mu square whole square minus 4 k square t square. So, what I did is I have taken this as d square plus mu square plus 2 k d and multiply both numerator and denominator by d square plus mu square minus 2 k d. So, the denominator becomes a square minus b square. This is the part with which we have multiplied and here it is f cos p t. And by the rule it says that you remove, you replace this d square by minus b square, the component of this cos, or the coefficient of this cos and you will get d square plus mu square minus 2 k d divided by minus b square plus mu square whole square plus 4 k square b square. So, you have replaced this d square by minus b square and hence this becomes plus and here is this f cos p t. So, this part is the constant mu square minus b square whole square plus 4 k square b square and in the denominator in the numerator it is d square plus mu square minus 2 k d multiplied by f cos p t. So, if you multiply this with each of this, what you are going to get is d square times f cos b t plus mu square f cos b t minus 2 k d times f cos b t divided by mu square minus b square whole square plus 4 k square p square. Now, d of this is the thing, but that you have to differentiate. Uh, this particular function. So, this will be uh, minus f b sin p t. So, if you do that, you will get it in the form mu square minus b square cos b t plus 2 k b sin b t divided by mu square minus this whole square plus 4 k square b square. The next thing what you have to do is, so if I write the general solution x is equal to e to the power minus k t a cos root of mu square minus k square into t plus mu square minus b square divided by mu square minus b square whole square plus cos k square b square multiplied by cos b t plus 2 k b divided by mu square minus b square plus 4 k square b square into sin b t. As such this is the solution, but we simplify a bit uh, for the better understanding of the problem. So, what you do is you put this as some cos epsilon 2 and this as some sin epsilon 2. So, they comes in a formula and you will get this as e to the power minus k t a cos root of b square minus a square into t plus so, this becomes cos b t cos epsilon plus sin b t sin epsilon 2 and you get this as cos of b t minus epsilon 2, where if I divide this that is sin epsilon 2 by cos epsilon 2, I can write that where tan epsilon 2 is equal to uh, this divided by this which is 2 k b by mu square minus b square. So, your epsilon 2 is tan inverse this. 
So, that is another way of this a, just a way of writing. So, from here actually you can get what is your uh, epsilon 2 which is tan inverse 2 k b by mu square. So, there is a square root. Yeah. So, now what can you tell about the solution? So, we have a damping force and as well as a uh, additional periodic uh, force disturbing the motion. So, from here you can see that this will give to a damping oscillation that is uh, it will start with a normal acceleration and slowly it will die out and then this is going to give another oscillation. So, if you plot this solution you will get it like this that it has started with an oscillation and because of that damping factor a e to the power minus k t cos of root of mu square minus k square t plus epsilon 1 because of this e to the power minus k t this is going to die out. But there is a factor b cos b t minus epsilon 2 and due to this factor again it is going to give you this periodic solution. So, this is called the free oscillation, but a damped one and this is called the forced oscillation. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture about this uh, horizontal oscillations and how you can model some particular situations. In our next lecture, we will be taking up the vertical oscillations. Till then, 